Hey, welcome to Path of the Course. This is going to be a super interesting episode. We're going to dive into how you can break 80 or how I broke 80 when I was playing really, really badly. The point of this podcast is kind of in the name. I'm trying to break part. I've never broken part in my life. I've been playing golf for, you know, the best part of 10 years and then really quite a lot, multiple times a week over the last sort of two or three years. And I've never broken par. My handicap officially on the world handicap system is a 2.8. And I know that sounds low, but trust me, I can show you the the emails that I sent back to the people when they gave me my handicap. I think I've only shot two over par once in my life. So I was really surprised to get that handicap. And I think honestly, it's going to go up. Um, But yeah, the aim is to be a scratch golfer. So this podcast is going to help me almost be my therapy as to how I'm going to get down, how I'm going to become a scratch golfer and how I'm going to break par because I've never done it before. I feel like this will also be super helpful for anyone who generally wants to get better at the game and work through some of the issues because we all face similar things even though it's in slightly different context on the golf course. We all face similar problems as golfers and so what I want to do is really talk through how I'm approaching some of the things on the golf course. I've never had lessons. I've never taken golf lessons really in my life. And so everything that I've learned, am learning and will learn kind of is coming off the internet, off YouTube, people giving me tips when they watch my swing, stuff like that. We can all relate to that. And hopefully as I've filmed all my rounds and we're going to look through the footage, see what's going wrong. Hopefully people in the comments can say, you know, Sammy, you're doing this is wrong with your swing or maybe this tip will help that ah i cannot wait for that please do comment if you see something awful with my swing or something that you've struggled with before and now you're getting better at let me know because anything will help Um, and i think if we all kind of work together and work out what's going wrong in our game and what we can improve on whether that's the mental side which is massive especially as you get down in the handicap i've realized that's something which i've kind of neglected or whether it's just technical and you can work on something better, whether it's your drives, whether it's your wedges, that's going to really help kind of get get me down. But moving on to today's pod, I shot one of the first rounds that I've played this summer. It's summer in the UK and everything's kind of changed. The, the ground is getting harder, the greens are getting quicker. And that means you have to kind of approach the course slightly differently. Or certainly I found that in, in one of the first rounds I played here. Um... This round, I shot a 79 at my local club. So that was seven over par. That's pretty okay for me. I say I average somewhere between 82 and 75 on average per round. Sometimes worse, sometimes better. But that's kind of where I'm floating at. And I just want to, for myself, look through the shots and say, okay, how do I get better? How do I knock shots off in certain areas of my game? Uh, Let's have a look at the scorecard, actually, because... If you don't do this as well, it, I find it really helpful is to have a golf app. It doesn't matter whether you score on the app or not, but just to show you exactly what is happening in your game, where your where your miss is, um, how many putts on average. So this was my round the other day. We had 18 holes and shot 79, so that's seven over. Some of the big headlines that we'll get into, um, fairways hit, so it does your driving accuracy. Fairways hit percentage was 14.3. <laughs> um, that is bad, man. That that is that is really bad. So we'll definitely get into that. The driver is obviously a bit of a problem. I recently got a new driver and I'm still working out kinks with that. Greens in regulation hit 44.4%. So still low, but an improvement on the driver. So obviously I, I managed to get it on the green even if I wasn't on the fairway, which is a, a decent sign. We have uh 5.6% birdies which is one one birdie and 5.6% double bogey so that's one double bogey so one birdie one double bogey that's that's okay the, the main thing for me i think um and especially as you're trying to get down with your handicap shoot lower scores is eliminate as many double bogeys as you can so whether that's getting better at the short game or or not hitting it out of bounds if you hit it out of bounds and get a two penalty and hitting three off the tee or something like that that is an automatic kind of um, you, your double bogey percentage obviously goes up massively, so that's something to avoid. Um, scores by par, par fives were five, so there's three par fives on this course. I parred every single one of them, so no birdies, no bogeys. Uh, one of the things that I heard from someone, especially as you're trying to shoot lower, and if you're trying to break par, that's obviously something which is going to be really important, is is actually going under par on the par fives. So I think for me now 
getting par on the par fives um, is pretty much the bare minimum. And that will that will change for you if you're at a different standard, a different point in your journey. But for me, that's pretty much the minimum. minimum. And on par threes, the average was 4.0. So I, I, think I, I think I may have bogeyed every single one, which again is not, yeah, I did, which is, which is not brilliant. Um, so that's definitely something I'm looking at the iron play every single par five, par three, sorry, was I missed the green. So that's definitely something to look at the approach shots. How can we get better? And the par fours were 4.3. So not awful on the par fours, but yeah, on the par fives. Okay. And on the par threes, that's, that's where I really let myself down on this round. And the big thing for me this round, which was a massive improvement from before, uh, was, putts so on average there were 1.8 putts per hole um and no three putts which was yeah trust me if you've if you've known me and hopefully as you get to know my golf game you'll know that that is uh few and far between so that was a pretty good thing so that was the round 79 plus seven let's get into some of you know how i was feeling before the round and then look at some of the footage so this was like i said before the first round that i'd done in about a week a week and a half so usually i'm playing two to three times a week and taking a week off i thought oh it's not very long it's okay but actually <laughs> if you look at me on the first tee now this this was a 7 30 a.m tea time it's lo- i mean look at that it's lovely light the sun rises at 4 a.m so you can go out really early and i felt felt okay going out but over this ball i was not confident let's just watch what happened on the first tee Okay, straight into the tree. So luckily that kind of clipped the tree and then came back, but I wasn't trying to draw that at all. You can see I'm looking down, not very happy with myself. It just clips the tree and, and makes it to the edge of the um the edge of the rough just off the fairway. So it's not a bad result, really. Um, but you can tell that I was a bit rusty there. And so that was definitely something going into the round that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but something that was really prevalent was My golf swing was kind of feeling out of touch. Another thing which I don't do, I don't know if you guys do it. If you're playing on the weekend and you've got the tee time and you're looking forward to it all week, then often you go to the range before your putt before practice. But for me, um, at university, I just finished. So I don't really have a schedule at the minute, which is nice to be able to go out and play at, at these times and stuff. But no practice at all. Like no putting before, no swings. This was literally, apart from a couple of, you know practice swings and loosening the shoulders on the tee this is that's all the practice i had that morning and so obviously looking pretty rusty there at the start okay so let's let's go through the big takeaways from the round we already mentioned it with the numbers was the driving 14.1 percent on the fairways that's not good tour average i think for the pga tour is is over 60 percent. and when you're hitting that many fairways that gives you a much better chance to obviously get on the green in regulation and then have two putts for par or one putts for for birdie and so for me now getting 14.1 percent on the fairway something has to be wrong right um something's not and it's, it's very difficult to do anything when you're completely off the fairway let's have a look at some examples so we've got this drive here on the second hole um it's, it's a par five so it's definitely one that i'm trying to birdie and I just yank it and it and it draws. I'm trying to fade it. Um, and we end up in the trees having to chip out, which on a par five is not that bad, but it, it sort of puts you in the same place where one that may have been a pretty easy birdie, if you can reach there on your second shot, is a chip out. And then you, you're not really going to make anything better than, a, better than a par unless you hit an amazing third shot. So that was a that was a difficult one, and then also let's look at the eighth hole. So this is my drive on on the eighth hole. Um, it's kind of similar thing. I'm trying to fade it. You can see there's a there's a dog leg. It goes round to the right, so I'm aiming over those trees on the right. It literally just goes straight and goes through the fairway to a point where I have to really try and almost hit a flop shot over these trees. I barely get through. It hits a tree and then and then bubbles down. Um, and that was an amazing chip for t- to get in for a, a look at par, which we'll show you in a bit. Um, and then finally, the eleventh hole. Um, so those two were were two yanks, which off the tee and on some approach shots, I I pulled it and I just didn't know why. Um, and this one was 
This one was was not good. You know, if anyone watching knows what I've done there, please tell me. Because I'm clearly fed up. But there's there's no part of me which actually knows really about the golf swing enough to know what's happened here. You know, for me to top it, and I'm shooting pretty decent scores, I'm usually a pretty good ball striker, I don't know what's happened. And the whole time I think, you know, why has that happened? Um, the one thing which you might be able to see right from the start, so if I just move it to the beginning, you can see my feet are pointing right. They're pointing almost to the middle of the trees there on the right, whereas actually I'm I'm aiming, I wanna, I wanna fade it over the tree on the left. Um, and the ball actually ends up going in that direction to where I want, but just on the ground. <laughs> Um, so I'm clearly cutting across myself. Um, I'm constantly going through this thing with the driver. Do I want to fade it? Do I want to draw it? Do I want to do both? Um, if you look at someone like Dustin Johnson, only fades it with his driver. Um, and a lot of other people do a bit of both, but the fade is definitely coming back as something which people want to do. The draw goes further with the driver, but it's also harder to control. So I kind of have to look at myself and think, um, what is... What do I want to do with the driver? But on this one, to be honest, I don't really mind about getting to scratch or whatever. I just don't want to be embarrassed on the golf course. And doing that if I'm playing with someone, luckily I was playing alone, but it's just, it just is not great, right? Um, and so if anyone knows what's gone on there to make me top it, please let me know in the comments or, or send me a DM or something because that's definitely what we're going to try and try and avoid. And if I go to the to the rest of that, to the rest of that hole, you see here, I take a five iron. I've got about 200 yards in. Uh, it's a par four. It's a pretty gettable par four with the driver. Like I, I would have had a little chip if I hit it well on the fairway, but I've got about 200 yards with a five iron. I'm just trying to out of the rough. I think you can, you know, it's not going to stop out of the rough. So if I pitch it short, it's going to bounce onto the green maybe, but you can see it goes round to the left. There's a dog leg left. So I'm aiming over the middle of the trees. I chose a five iron because I think I think that's a good number to get over the trees. That's my number one thing. I want to make it over the trees. And I think, oh, I can draw it round. So my feet are pointing in a good direction for a draw at this point. You see, it, it just goes straight. And it <laughs> it just goes to the right. Um, a decent strike, but it just does not move at all. And then I'm stuck in the trees for this chip out. Watch this. Oh my gosh. You see that gap on the left? That's the gap I'm aiming at where the flag is. You can kind of see it. It's pretty light, but that's the big gap I'm aiming at. It goes through. Do you tell me how, what are the chances of that, that it goes through that gap and doesn't hit a tree? Um, so one, that's pretty lucky that it actually got out. It goes over the back and then I have to chip on again. And then I two putt. So that was the double bogey, right? And you can kind of see how from the, from the initial drive, the mistakes compound, right? And that's something which really I'm trying to get better at because, you know, I'm prideful about my golf. I don't want to have to hit chip outs and stuff like that. Just take your medicine. That's what all the best golfers do. They chip out and then try and hit a better shot. A bogey is always better than a double bogey. And so if you're compounding mistakes like I did there, I had the top driver and then I had the five iron, which went in the woods. And then I had the chip out, which went over the green. So all of that compounds to, you know, hitting a double bogey which is something which i definitely could have avoided there you just see it's a bit of lack of concentration or whether it's the wrong play it's the wrong shot or it didn't line it up properly those are the things that i'm definitely trying to avoid when i'm going out on the golf course the big takeaway from that is driving um from from those three shots you just saw all drives miss the fairway and i had to chip out and on every single par five as we'll get onto, on every single par five i miss the fairway and I managed to par all of them because you've got an extra shot. And luckily I had enough distance that I could I could get in on the third shot. But if every single par five was a par and I missed the fairway on every single one, imagine if I'd hit the fairway, I could have had better looks for birdie and had a had a better overall score. So the driving percentage really hurt me um in this round. However, I think the best bit about this round, it certainly for me, was the putting. Um I am a I'm a bad putter. Um I, I have really struggled historically with finding the right distance and lining up. My brain just, you know, some people can just put the ball on the ground, look at the hole and like kind of draw the line in their mind. I really struggle with that. I have to kind of line it up on the ball, pick where I want it to break, line it up on the wall and then use the, you know, line on the ball to hit my putts. I know a lot of people do do that on tour and just in general. 
Um, but also a lot of people can just feel it out. One of my fate, well, one of my quotes that I, I've heard, which made me laugh was um, after the, the open win, Cam Smith last year, someone asked him, Cam, you're so good at, at putting and your three putt percentage is so low. What do you do on those long distance putts? And he's like, oh, I don't know, man. I, I just fail it. Like that's how I get my distance. And I was like, oh, that is crazy. Because to me, that sounds so foreign. Right? You just you just feel it out. I can't do that. I've never I've never experienced that. So I don't know uh, whether you guys lined it up on the ball or whether you just feel it out or whether you have to be like Bryson and, and take the putter back. Um, but I did used to have an Odyssey putter that was pretty, uh, it was a nice putter, but it was a hammer kind of counterbalanced. And I just really struggled with that uh, for a long time. And then I recently got this blade putter, which was like the cheapest one in the store, but it did really well for me when I was practicing just because it was way more simple and I could control the putter head a little bit better. And then just, this was the first full 18 I played with a new grip. So I got a, a super stroke grip, a bit of a thicker grip just to get rid of my hands. Um, a lot of the tips that I've received from people when they've watched me putt is I'm too handsy. I'm too, too much with the wrists. And so that was in order to kind of eliminate that. And you, I mean, you see the fruit in this, um, in this round. So let's have a look at some, some clutch putts. This was, um, on the fifth hole and this was a two putt for pass I needed. This was a birdie putt coming up, uh, uphill, a pretty long putt as you can see, but those kind of lag putts are something which I've, you know, I was slightly interested there for a second, but those are the kind of lag putts which I've been missing. Maybe they'd go four or five foot past and then you have a pretty difficult putt coming back for par and those are the knee knockers you don't really want to ever have. Um, so that was a good putt um, in order to get an easy two putt there. And then we have uh, this best putt of the day, just unbelievable. This is for me the hardest hole on the course because it's pretty long um, and it's always been been difficult. And I don't think I've ever birdied this, but this putt was for birdie. It's, you know, at least 30 foot, um, probably longer um, and stuff like that. I mean, it was traveling at a bit of a pace. It probably would have gone three or four foot past. But to give that a good roll and, and knock that in for birdie, I was absolutely <laughs> elated. Look at that. Um, I don't think I'd ever birdied that hole before. So that felt really, really good. Um, and then the last one was this putt on the 17th which i want to show you um although i put it pretty well during the day no three putts so i can't really complain i did have putts like this for birdie which um you know on a different day may have gone in the the term when your putter gets hot i've never really experienced before right um i wish i had and hopefully i will in the future but putting for me has always been damage limitation. And that is definitely not the right way to go about um, mentally thinking about putting. I know that it's much better to uh, almost put aggressively and see how many shots can I make up. And this was definitely one where I, I actually was trying to play aggressively. Um, and it, you know, it's uphill. My one swing thought was get it there. You know, don't leave this birdie putt short, which I think is a good thing to have. I just hit it way too hard. So that's a little window into some of the struggles I've had with a putter because that was no more than six foot. So tall make percentage, you want to make way over 50% of those. Um, and, and that was a good chance for birdie on a par five where I missed the fairway as we'll look at. Um, though apart from the putting, the, the short game really kept me in it. You know, 14% on the driver, something else needs to go well for you to break 80. And I think that's the moral here. And the short game was really one which kept me in it. So let's have a look. This is on the first hole. I've just missed the green to the left-hand side and have a chip back up to try and get it close. Um, I use my 58 degree a lot, though I use varying clubs around the green. I saw a thing that Tiger said where it's, you know, the, the better chippers use more clubs around the green. So I've really tried to take that in to be part of my ethos and how I'm working it out. If there's a lot of uh, fairway or rough to cover before I get to the green then I'll usually take a, a higher lofted club of 58 um, in this case you can see that I mean I'm in some long grass so there's not really any trouble getting under the ball sometimes if it's a really tight lie on the fairway just off the green I'll be pretty worried using a higher lofted club so I don't chunk it I know we all have problems with that if you don't then you're you're special um, but this one I felt confident using the 58 and also in the summer I knew one it's coming out of the rough so this, it's going to spin less um, and it's the, the ground's baked pretty hard and the greens are going to run so I was, I was happy using a 58 degree on that shot 
And then if we look at the what putt I had after that, literally a one foot tap in. So that's where short game really saved me. Let's have a look at another example on the eighth hole. This is probably a, a 30 yard little pitch shot. Again with the 58, this is when I went over the trees uh, that we saw at the start. Just a little clip and runs up to be really, really, really nice. Um, and again, like a, a, a less than a foot tap in and that was for par. So two, two up and downs there to save par where you don't even have to worry about putting. Um, that's something which I've largely missed in my game. My short game has never been amazing. And that I've heard from people is one of the big things that really make a difference in getting your score lower is making those up and downs with um, par saves and not getting bogeys on the card. There's a guy on YouTube, Golf Sidekick, who's really good with um, when you're watching someone to break a certain score, if you want to break 100, break 90, break 80, something like that. He um, works on the mental side of the game where a par is great. Like, unless you're a tall pro and you need to make birdies on some holes, a par is great. So every single par save, I'm kind of like pumping my fists and I'm really happy with it. And so in those scenarios with the up and downs there, the short game really kept the momentum going on this round. A couple of times where I thought the wheels, maybe if I'd have bogeyed, that hole would have come off the par saves from the up and downs there really made a difference okay let's talk about the par fives we mentioned them that i was level on the par fives um uh, a par on every single one uh, we saw the tee shot on two go left on on the par five and then i was chipping out of the trees let's look at the tee shot on number 12 where pretty much the same thing happened you're, you're looking to fade it round and it just goes straight uh, ends up going through the fairway so on the second shot again I was chipping out and had the same scenarios it's literally three of the same scenarios on this um on on all of the par fives and let's look at 17 17 slightly different because I used a, a four iron on this hole I just wanted to make sure I got in the fairway basically um you only need 200 and sort of five yards to get to the end and the irony is even though I used an iron to try and get on the fairway I went in the trees and again, exactly the same scenario. Um, I had to chip out of the trees. Luckily, I could advance it down the fairway. If I couldn't do that, that would have been a nightmare. Um, and I was able to uh, have a decent approach shot in. But with those par fives, I think, again, putting yourself in a good position, it's never really going to harm you unless you go out of, out of bounds and a three off the tee. That, that's going to be almost an automatic bogey, if not a double bogey. But... Um, the par fives you can salvage it but you really want to take advantage of those par fives you know especially as i'm getting down and trying to break par you you got to go below par on the on the par fives okay the last thing i wanted to touch on with this round was the approach shots i've had some trouble today or in this round with the approach shots missing both sides a lot of people have their one miss which is ah, oh, i always fade it a little bit too much slice it a bit much or oh, i i thin it a bit for me i never have really ever had one big miss which is okay but it's it's kind of annoying because it's not like oh if i know i'm gonna miss right oh, i'm gonna aim left for this one so it's never like that which makes it difficult when i'm trying to hit a specific place or i'm not feeling like i'm playing that well which was the case in this round so let's have a look at some of the shots on the approaches which i didn't think went well so this was the 10th hole uh, a par three i had an eight iron in hand and you can see it just off the tee straight away goes left um, and goes left and draws. And so I had a difficult shot from way left of the green to get up and down for par and didn't manage to do it. So that was a shot gone begging. Um, and a lot of them are from the approach shots. And so that that was a pull tug draw. It was just it was just kind of everything went wrong. And it, if you look at it, my this is the <laughs> this is the only shot I think in the round where my feet are actually aiming in the right position which is ironic because sometimes when I, I hit a straight shot, my, my feet were off to the right. And so you get this kind of um, crossing of the the club path versus the club where, where my feet are going. And so it looks like it's going the wrong way. This is the first time where the feet have gone the right way, but the club is going to the left. So I'm clearly swinging across it, although I, I draw this. So yeah, there, there's a lot of questions going on in this. We know, and if you guys don't know, the, the reason why you draw or fade it is basically the relationship between the club path and the club face. 
So if you want to draw it, want to go left, then the club face has got to be left of where your club path is going and the opposite for a fade. And so I know that, um, and I th I'm trying to draw it into this flag, which is maybe problem number one. Maybe I should fade it. Um, and that's a big question I have about a lot of the approach shots. Let's look at another one. So this is uh, hole 15, another par three. Remember, I bogeyed all of the par threes. And so this was the same thing where I think this was a six iron. I had about 180 into the flag. And again, it just pu pulled, goes left um, and had a chip and didn't manage to get there. And so I just was pretty fed up with how I was doing. <laughs> Look at that. Look at my arms are like, yeah, I was aiming here. And yet it went like over there. It wasn't that an angle of like 20 degrees different. So clearly wasn't happy with the way I was hitting my irons that day, especially not off the tee. Um, and let's have a look at 16. This is the last approach shot I'm going to show you. This was a 120 yard shot with a with a 50 degree. And you can see it again, a tug. And I kind of dropped my club and I'm like, oh my gosh, not a good shot. And it ends up being okay, right? It ends up being on the green. And yet that immediate feeling was, oh no, this is going like, this is going to go badly. Um, and often it's managing expectations like, okay, that ended up on the green. What are you so mad about? But off the face, it really felt like it was going way, way left. So th that's obviously a problem that I've got to correct because I'm not really sure how to yet. We we've got to deal with the alignment, right? Let's have a look at that approach shot on the 15th, shall we? Um, you can see my feet are going kind of at the flag again. So again, one of the only ones where the feet are okay, but the, the ball's going left. And then on the drives, you can see... Let's look at the second hole. You see how far right my feet are going on this shot. So my, my feet are going way, way right of the fairway, way right. And yet I'm cutting across and pull, tugging, drawing it way, way left in the trees. So that is a massive discrepancy with alignment. If anyone knows really what drills to do specifically for that, um, I've got to get that sorted out. So that I think is going to be my number one aim for the next time. Hopefully in episode two of this, you'll see my alignment is slightly better because I'm going to try and go to the range. The only thing that I'm thinking now is is what I've got to do is put an alignment stick down at the range, line my feet up with that and hit towards that line. So I'm not trying to draw it, not trying to fade it, but just hitting straight shots, getting everything flowing in a line. And if the ball goes in a certain direction from that, then I'll know that I can correct it either way. So hopefully that will give me a little bit of feedback if I'm hitting it left, if the club face is closed, or if I'm hitting it right. At the minute, I, I'm expecting it probably to go left. I mean, you can see where the feet are going. The feet are going way right, and the ball is going way left. So that, to me, is like, okay, if it's going left, if my club path is left and it's going left, that means the club face is, is closed. Because if the club, club face was open, you'd just see a massive slice. Um, but it's not a massive slice, so... Um, I think that's going to be the main thing and that might be a, a grip adjustment that might be um something else i'm not too sure yet if anyone has any advice please do let me know my mode of thinking with my approach shots and for me my wedges are my my most confident club right i think that's where i gain the most shots how close i get with my wedges the thought process behind it a lot of the time for me is i want to hit one shot shape you see some people like Scotty Scheffler and other people drawing approach shots into flags. I find that pretty difficult because it's not as consistent as fading it. You know, fading the ball is sometimes less popular because it doesn't go as far. But if you look at the, you know, I'm I'm trying to model myself off good players. For me, Colin Morikawa, who has the best approach numbers in the PGA, he always fades it into flags and you never really see him draw it. And if he's getting it closed, then I'm going to try and copy him. Um, and fading it, you can kind of just control the club face a little bit more. Um, I mean, look at, I mean, I like him, but look at Rick Shields, who, who golfs on YouTube. And he, he's a pro, but he's not on the tour. But you see, he draws a lot of his shots. And even though he's he's a good player, you see the troubles that he gets into when he draws the ball and it just goes far too much. And you saw that on a couple of the shots that we've done here where I've overdrawn the ball. And so fading the ball is definitely safer. And so if I'm if I'm trying to do that, then I think I've got to stick with that rather than flip-flapping between a draw and a fade. Um, 
sometimes you have to draw the ball. You've got to be able to do that. I've got to have that in my locker. But hitting a fade, you know, Dustin Johnson only hits a fade off the tee, off approach shots, whatever. Um, and he's doing all right. So I think that's that's something which I've got to get in my head a little bit more is that let's let's only hit a fade, let's only hit a draw. But I think I'm definitely going to go for the fade just because of the percentages that you come out with. Okay, here we go. This is a fun segment. We're going to close soon um, this first round. I hope you've enjoyed. I have no idea how this is going to come out. But for me, it's just good to talk about the problems that we all face on the golf course and look at the specifics of actually what I'm doing on on the film. Um, and it's kind of weird to watch your own golf swing. Sometimes I have people behind me with a phone, but having, you know, bringing the camera out and actually dissecting it, looking at the angles, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty humbling as well, because I realized that actually, you know, I had no idea that my feet were pointing right and I was hitting left and I was doing this crisscross. But it's um, it's good to see it and it's good to kind of work through the problems. Th these are going to be the, the awards for the round. So I'm going to give awards for loads of different things. First of all, we have drive of the day. This was on the fifth hole and this was the first drive which I felt like went all right. I was trying to fade this down the, down the middle, just let it come back. Although the angle's off a little bit there, it does sort of start to fade at the end. And it gave me with a really, really manageable shot less than 100 yards in. And it was an easy two putt. We saw the, the good two putt earlier. Um, but that was the first time I hit a fairway. And I think I, think, I think I only hit two fairways during the day or three fairways, and this was one of them. This was definitely the best one. And it just sets me up easily for a par. Like, if I bogey, bogey it from there, then something's really, really gone wrong. So the drive sets you up. I always think you're going to be happier if you have a good driving day um, than if you have, like, a really good approach day or a really good putting day. The, hitting a good drive fills you with so much energy for the rest of the round. And so that, that was a good one to get away on the fifth hole. So that's drive of the day. Then we have best approach shot of the day. This was on the 17th, so we saw I hit my four iron right into the trees, managed to chip out down the fairway, and so I had this 100, 130 yards in. Now, my 50 degree usually goes about 125, but I thought we are with the wind, so it's going to carry a bit, and we know it's probably not going to stop as quickly as it would normally because it's baked ground. It's the summer. I've not really played yet in the summer, and so I was, I was expecting this to kind of have a big leap forward. I was trying to fade it, which was a good start. Um, and this was the one shot in the round where I felt like it, I mean, it came on the 17th hole, so pretty late, but it felt like I did exactly what I wanted to. I wanted to have an uphill up, uphill putt, so I wanted to end six or so yards or feet left of the hole, so I can have an up, uphill putt. I wanted to fade it in, aim for the middle of the green, so I have margin for error. And this was the first time that I really felt like had a good plan and stuck to that plan and executed that plan which felt really good unfortunately it came on the 17th hole so it was a bit little too late um but yeah that felt good to have that approach shot and it ended up um if we just see the play it ended up six foot left and we've already seen this part this was um for a for a birdie and missed it but you know to, to have that putt um at this point in the round especially when i hit the first one in the trees felt pretty good that i had that for birdie um Best chip of the day. Now, there are a few candidates um, that we've already seen. On the first hole, the third shot, which ends up like a foot from the hole, that was really, really nice to have. Um, but I think for me, it's got to be this 30-yard little pitch up the hill to give me a foot for par on the eighth hole. And that was pretty special because I was, I was in a really, really sticky situation after that drive. And there was, you know, percentage wise on that uphill, I couldn't, I couldn't actually see the, the, the ground where the flag, I could see the flag, but not where the flag hit the ground. So it was kind of a blind shot. I knew I had to open it up. And one thing for me is when I'm, when I'm trying to hit it high, I always think I finish with my hands high. Um, that's what Tiger said. <laughs> you, you'll notice a lot of these kind of ideas and processes I go through in my head. I've just heard from pros and I'm trying to implement it in my game. I've got no idea whether they'll work for me or not I'm just trying it but he always says finish high when you're trying to hit it high and so on that one I do and it goes up and just stops a foot from the hole so that really I couldn't ask any more from that 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 takes it, it for best chip of the day best putt of the day we've already seen I couldn't hold back on this one 14th never birdied this hole before 30 plus foot rolls it in with, with the arm up he already starts walking halfway down. Now, that is not because I know it's going in. That's because I just want to get to the ball quicker. Um, but the arm goes up. 
Oh, how good does that feel, man? Um, and best overall shot of the day, that has to be the best overall shot of the day, right? I mean, percentages of that are so low. That's never really happened to me before. I'm not, you know, I don't hold putts. Um, but this was the first time with this new grip. I felt like, oh my, like this is going to be a good ride with this putter. Um, I was, I was unbelievably happy with that one. Um, and that was the only birdie of the day. So to put it on that, on that putt was definitely best overall shot of the day. Okay, this next segment um, is best freak out. I am a very competitive person, especially on the golf course, even when I'm playing with myself. Um, and I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve when I'm playing any sport and golf is no different. And I, and I, I, I tend to get annoyed sometimes when, I, when I'm not playing that well. Um, I don't, you know, shout or stuff like that, but let's have a look at what happens on the seventh hole. This is a par three, and we know I bogeyed this hole because I bogeyed all the par threes, but this was 125 yards to the flag. Now, wind with, and we know from that 17th hole when I had 130 yards, I used my 50 degree, I used my 50 degree here. I kind of expect to carry this at least 125, especially with the wind. I don't mind if I go a bit far, but it's about 120 three or so to carry that bunker and so that that is where I'm aiming you can see for the first time my feet are actually in a good position to fade the ball so um, maybe that's a lesson for future in terms of where my alignment's going versus where I'm hitting it but let's have a look at what happens here and it and you can see the ball even though there's a tracer you could see it without a tracer <laughs> it's looking like a toddler who's been told he can't have any sweets or has to go to bed both feet come off the ground um really not happy because i was like for sure in the air for sure it was going to carry the bunker for sure it was in play like hole in one on the cards kind of thing um because it wasn't a bad strike but that's why it's surprised like it was more out of surprise that it hit the lip of the bunker and then came back i had a bunker shot and didn't get up and down so there was the bogey so that was pretty annoying um that I think was potentially the best freak out of the day or the 16th where we, we've already seen it where um, I tug it left and then end up really not happy when it goes <laughs> and that was a, that was a freak out mid shot that was a drop of the club and a and an unbelievable catch behind the back I'm sorry but that is um, <laughs> I've got to be proud of that even though the shot wasn't amazing i wasn't happy with it but um yeah that was a funny one but i think the 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 award of best freak out definitely goes to the seventh hole um tee shot acting like a toddler the next one is most stupid play there's a lot of times in a round where i'm just not thinking um and this is one of them the 11th hole um although you can drive this um i don't think it's a driver now like i'm pretty sure that even if even if, if i hit a three wood if i hit a four iron five iron anything to get up there i'm gonna have less than 150 yards in especially with it rolling um as it does in the summer but i think oh no i'm gonna drive the green i'm gonna get this it is diff i had not been drawing the ball with the driver well all all day i'm trying to fade it with the driver and so just everything almost a comedy of errors goes wrong and i top it we've seen it just not happy so that i think was my most stupid play of the day not playing with the percentages at all um and then lastly most clutch play um the the eighth hole we we've seen that got best chip of the day just the 40 yard uphill chip just that that was pretty clutch to get up and down for par to keep the momentum going um otherwise that would have been two bogeys in a row and who knows what would have happened after that or this on the ninth hole it's a drive there's a par five and i'm looking to aim basically over that tree that you can see just to the right go over there and fade it round. There's another bunch of trees behind this tree that you can see on the right. Um, but it doesn't do that. It d does what I did quite a lot this day, even though it was a really good strike. Look, you can see me, I'm just like, get over to the right. But the clutch play was not from me. It was from the tree. Um, and the tree kicks the ball back into a ground under repair so I could just take it back and place it just behind the ground under repair. And I've got a lovely... Uh, four iron to to get close and maybe get on but i end up just going right and then have an easy chip on for green and regulation and then a two putt for par so that was um that that was the clutch play of the day i think from the tree not from me um but there we go that's the round 79 plus seven this was the first episode of path of the course we are trying to 
break par. And hopefully some of this thinking through, I think that the number one takeaway for me is that alignment with the driver. But even though I was playing bad, even though I didn't hit any fairways, the fact that I still got this number was pretty good to me. And it um, it meant that a couple of other things had to go right. We saw the putting went well. We saw the short game went well. So I'm happy with those, not happy with the driver. Hopefully next time I go out and film, we can get the alignment right, get the driver going right, and then see what happens. Because, you know, you never know when I, I'm, I feel in the game when I've, when I've got 130 to like 80 yards out with a wedge, I feel like I'm in the game to, uh, to make some birdies. I think generally I'm not a birdie player. Like I don't get a load of birdies. Um, I'm, I'm pretty solid. So when I'm, when I'm hitting pars, I feel good. Um, but I think the danger is that you kind of get all bogeys because one shot goes wrong. To be honest, I'm not really sure. But we shall see. This was the first episode of Part of the Course. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know. DM me um, all, all your takes about my swing, how bad it is. Send me your swings because um, hopefully I can learn something. And also how you'd kind of assess this round. I, I'd probably give it a B minus because although I was playing badly, I still managed to like get a good score. So the first grade for Part of the Course round one is going to be a B minus. Hopefully we can improve that. We're going to have to get an A++++ to break par because I've never done it. Um, I think a think, lot of things have got to get right, but there's also got to be a, an improvement technically in the swing for me to break par. So my immediate plan is driver and alignment, get that sorted. Hopefully we'll be back on and breaking par very soon. See you later.